All right, guys. Good morning. Today is the day that I need to plant some of this Whitetail Institute Conceal. Um, sorry if there's a little bit of wind noise. I'm out here. It's a real nice, cool day. It's May, uh, Memorial Day weekend. So I'm pushing it for time to get this stuff in the ground. But I think I'll be all right. We got some rain in the forecast for today and tomorrow. So it should be plenty of rain. So as you can see right here behind me, there's a strip. So you can basically see from here to about here. And then right behind me is my soybean food plot, my uh, Whitetail Institute power plant. So the idea of this is to be able to get some of this conceal out. I love using annual screens. I know a lot of people like to do the switchgrass. Um, and it's pretty cost effective if you can get that switchgrass established. But I'm, I'm more of a results guy the first year. So I'm gonna end up using this. Um, I've used it before. I got probably eight feet. So we're, I'm gonna hope that this does it again. I'm making this strip wider than I did last year because I feel like the deer would come out here but not feel too comfortable until right before dark. And the other stuff that I had was a little bit too thin. Um, and to be honest with you, it's just, I think this was a little bit better product when it came to the, um, the sheer thickness of it. I used the Northwoods Whitetail HD um, heavy screen, which was awesome. But like I said, I didn't plant it quite heavy enough and it wasn't thick enough for you to actually be hidden behind it. So I extended this, it's probably 30 feet wide now instead of 15. And we're gonna see how this stuff works. I'm also gonna be trying to no-till this stuff in the ground. I can go ahead and show you all, let me get the camera. All right. Hopefully that thing doesn't get messed up. So I'm gonna try no-till. So right here you can see, I already nuked all of this right here. And the reason I think that I can get the no-till to work is because it looks kind of rough, but when you get underneath the thatch that was left over from the last years, I mean, there's dirt. So right here is an example. Here's some exposed dirt, but I mean, you pull this stuff back. I mean, it's right to the soil. So I should be able to get something in. And then over here should be pretty much the same thing. You can pull back this thatch, boom. Um, and this seed should be small enough. I looked, it said, you really just need to be able to get um, about a quarter inch into the ground. And that should be about what you need. So I'm gonna try the no-till and I'm gonna drive over top of it with the tractor tires. Hopefully that pushes it down and get some good seed to soil contact. And then we'll get some rain this afternoon. And hopefully by Monday or Tuesday, we'll have something rolling and this is Sunday. So hopefully in a couple days we'll have something already getting close to starting to grow. But I'm kind of on a time crunch, so I'm gonna go ahead and try to knock this stuff out. I've got probably, whew, I say I have a, every bit of 350 yards worth of this stuff in a 30 foot stretch to do. So I got three bags, three quarter of an acre. Um, I think that should be plenty. And then in some of the other spots that I feel like I need to go heavy in, I can go heavy in other spots I can go light in. So we're gonna go ahead and try this. Now this is seven pounds, so I can hold all of it in this, but I think I'm gonna go so much low. And I can show y'all some of the seed right here. So that's how little the seed is. So that's why I believe I can do the no-till. One. All right, that's two bags worth. Zip that up. I'm gonna move the tractor out of the way and then I'm gonna go ahead and get spreading this stuff. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I think I'm gonna start on probably setting two on this chap and spreader. Let's see how that works. All right, so I just got two bags done. For anybody that wants to have a, a slight understanding of how much seed you're gonna need to buy, um, based on how, my results here. Basically, this is about 30 feet wide. It's about 10, 11, 
12 yards, something like that. Um, I got from here all the way to the wood line over there, which is give or take 200, 250 yards, something like that. And that took two bags to, I'm gonna have to go back and hit another spot and then I'm gonna come back down. So you're gonna need at least, I would say if you're gonna make it 30 feet wide, you're gonna need at least two bags. And that's, uh, that's being kind of generous. You might need a little bit more, but I'm gonna make it work with what I got. That bag spreader does a pretty good job at putting it out evenly, and I just walked a, a really brisk speed walk, and uh, it seemed like I, I got plenty of seed down. So that's just an estimation. I'm going to go ahead and put this third bag in, and I'm going to finish up the rest of it. All right. So you got a whole thing of plot boost. Uh, my big sprayer is down, so I'm still huffing it with this thing. But thankfully I have this because it comes in handy. It's a little bit more work, but that's all right. So I'm gonna go ahead and run down through here and I'm gonna spray plot and start, try to help these seeds as much as I can. And then I'm gonna take the tractor, run over everything, just move over one step at a time, one step at a time, um, one set of tire tracks, and just try to get that seed pushed down into the soil. We got a little bit of rain last night, so it's a little malleable. It's soft enough that I should be able to push it down in there. And I got the, um, I got the big bush hog on the back of it, so that should help with a little bit more weight and also i believe i can come through here i believe that's milkweed i don't know whatever that is um i need to chop some of that down so hopefully this stuff has the best chance possible but i'm gonna go ahead and get spraying all right just got done spraying that plot start took me about five ten minutes but i ended up getting getting everything sprayed so, uh, sorry if I'm a little out of breath. I'm trying to, almost was running doing it. But now I'm going to drive over top of everything and uh, see if I can push some of that seed down the ground. All right, so as you can see, right here, here, and here, this is how small some of the, these seeds are. And well, I'm, see how I easily I just push that into the ground. So that's the idea, is that that tire will come over top. Just push it down, get a little bit tighter to the soil. And you see it, the thatch right here, most of those seeds went down on, below it. Even though there's a lot of thatch still on everything, you can see that that seed is just small enough. It's not quite a clover seed or like chicory or something, but it was very tiny. So that's part of the reason why I believe I can do the no-till. And we're gonna see, hopefully I didn't waste 100 bucks on seed. I don't think it is, but I'm gonna go ahead and hop on the tractor, get to driving around. Um, and I'll show you all some results here, hopefully in, in probably about a month is when I'll be able to see if there's any any good growth because um, it's kind of hard to figure out what's what when it starts just starts growing but I think it should be should be successful so thanks for watching you can follow me on Instagram at going with Gus um, please like and subscribe like I said love all the support it feels great when you get a comment leave a comment below um, maybe you want to see the results of some other thing see what uh, some of my other food plots are doing I'm gonna try to make a round so that way I can show the results, the failures or the um, successes. Um, for, most, for the most part, everything seems like it's growing pretty dang well except for one food plot that I tried. So, so thanks for watching and as always, gotta get going.